at last. I must say I'm disappointed in your progress. I imagined you'd be here sooner. Tell me, did it trouble you? To murder your brothers. Did it trouble you when you ordered me into the abyss? <laughs> Eternity is relentless, Raziel. When I first stole into this chamber centuries ago, I did not fathom the true power of knowledge. To know the future, Raziel. To see its paths and streams tracing out into the infinite. As a man, I could never contain such forbidden truths. But each of us is so much more than we once were. Do you not feel with all your soul how we have become like gods? As such, are we not indivisible? As long as a single one of us stands, we are legion. Our futures are predestined. Mobius foretold mine eons ago. We each play out the parts fate has written for us. Free will is an illusion. I found the tomb of Saravan Cain. How could you profane a priest by turning him into a vampire? How could I not? One must keep his friends close, Raziel, and his enemies even closer. Who better to serve me than those whose passion transcends all notions of good and evil? The Seraphim were saviors, defending Nazgul from the corruption that we represent. My eyes are open, Cain. I find no nobility in the unlife you rudely forced on my unwilling corpse! You may have uncovered your past, but you know nothing. You think the Sarafan were noble? Altruistic? <laughs> oh, don't be simple. Their agenda was the same as ours. Destroyer, Pawn, and Messiah. Welcome, time span soul. Welcome to your destiny. Where am I? Is the usual question. In your case, when might be more Very well, you old snake. If you'd prefer I use my bare hands... Well, this is completely unexpected. This orb disables our vampire enemies, leaving them helpless and incapacitated. Strangely, it seems to have the same effect on that peculiar weapon of yours. But you must believe me. I mean you no harm. You can drop the benevolent facade, Mobius. I know who and what you are. I should kill you where you stand. <laughs> Perhaps you should, my boy. But you don't. Are you so certain of that, Mobius? 
My role as Time Guardian affords me a certain level of omniscience, Raziel. No, you don't kill me. That honor belongs to your maker, Cain. Some thirty years from now... Ah, you two are a pair. You're just as fatalistic as he is. Death comes for us all, Raziel. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. How is it that you know my name? We have never met. On the contrary, Raziel. I know you very well. And it grieves me to see how cruelly Cain has used you. I knew you when you were one of the Seraphim Brotherhood, Raziel. We were even close. Oh, please. Fortunately, you need not love me now to be my ally. Are we within the stronghold of the Seraphim Priesthood? Yes. But the glorious days of the Seraphim have long since passed, I'm afraid. This is a more cynical and indecorous age. My mercenary army now inhabits this stronghold. We strive to honor the memory of the Seraphim with our own humble crusade. Is this the Vampire Vorador? Yes. The scourge of the Circle. The most depraved and decadent example of his whole degenerate race. He slaughtered six of my fellow Guardians as they cowered defenseless in this room. And you somehow survived this massacre? I and two others. The Circle was devastated. Only we three were spared. How convenient. You forgive me if I don't naively devour every scrap of information you toss me. You have a reputation for deceit. And who has slandered me, sir? Your malefactor, Cain? The one who betrayed and destroyed you? Our common enemy? Consider the source before you judge me too harshly. We'll forget about rekindling our old friendship then. But consider an alliance based on our common ground. We both want Cain dead. I can help you do it. You don't want to meddle in this, old man. I know all about your sordid little schemes, but you're simply out of your depth on this one. You underestimate me, Raziel. Let me show you. Even now, Cain is lying in wait for you, unaware that I've snatched you out of the time stream and brought you here to me. See how he lingers at the very pillars he is destined to destroy, foolishly confident that he has eluded your grasp. The pillars are still standing in this time. Yes, Raziel. They are the embodiment of the divine force which preserves the life of our world. We who serve the pillars maintain their delicate balance, and Cain is destined to be the fulcrum upon which that balance turns. I believe you have already endured the wasteland wrought by his terrible, selfish decision. Cain's very existence is a cancer upon this world. As long as he lives, all of Nosgoth is in peril. You may never again be human, Raziel. But you can re-embrace the essence of your humanity and the nobility of your Seraphim heritage. Go to him, Raziel, and end this. But first, you will need to find your way out of the stronghold, and in this, I'm afraid I cannot help you. My soldiers will not understand your appearance here. They will try to kill you. You needn't fear them, of course. They're no match for you. Try to keep the casualties to a minimum. But do what you have to do. All great movements require a few martyrs. Alone now, I surveyed my surroundings and noticed a second time streaming chamber. Its entrance identical to the first, but with one distinction. That crystal was significant, but how, I had not yet discovered.
Throughout the stronghold, I discovered evidence of my former nobility and my life as a Saraphan priest. This was the heritage so foully stolen from me when Cain raided my sacred crypt and defiled me. Away from the influence of Mobius's cursed staff, I could feel the strength of the Soul Reaver slowly returning. If that orb was as debilitating to vampires as it was to the blade, it gave Mobius a powerful advantage over his enemies. I finally understood how Mobius's crusade could decimate the vampires so successfully. If he could immobilize his enemies, they were at his mercy. But why, I wondered. Would the staff have any effect on the Reaver? As I neared the stronghold's inner sanctum, a strange sensation crept over me. An indescribable feeling of displacement, a sense of vertigo, as reality itself appeared to warp and bend around me. The disturbance seemed to emanate from the sanctuary's furthest chapel. As I cautiously approached, the sense of dislocation intensified with each step. So this was the tomb of the beloved King William the Just, beatified here as the martyr and catalyst of Mobius's crusade. I was reminded of Cain's journey as a fledgling vampire, how Mobius coerced him to travel back in history and assassinate William, thus igniting a genocidal hatred of vampires among the citizens of Nosgoth. And here I discovered the source of the displacement, the Soul Reaver itself, laid out like a holy relic, and broken, apparently in the battle between William and Cain. I had not thought such a thing was possible, until, of course, Cain shattered the blade against me when he tried to strike me down. Thus, the captive spirit inhabiting the Reaver was released, and binding itself to me, became my symbiotic weapon. And so the Reaver met its former self, still imprisoned in this corporeal shell. I watched, mesmerized, as the Wraith Blade uncoiled itself and snaked down the length of the physical blade. Embracing its twin, its mirror self, the Reaver's long dormant spirit was now fully aroused. And for the first time, I felt the true presence of this other entity, willful, ravenous, and deranged from thousands of years of imprisonment. The Reaver was now in command, and I, now merely its helpless host, felt my soul being leeched to restore the blade. But the Reaver knew better than to destroy its host, and just as I neared the brink of oblivion, the blade released its hold on me. As I recovered, I realized we were now bound together in a fragile alliance. The Reaver no longer merely my symbiotic weapon, but a sentient parasite competing for control. What have you done to me, Mobius? Is this your trap? How mine? Don't forget it was Cain who led you here, not I. While you curse me, the only soul in Nosgoth ready to guide and assist you, Cain laughs at our folly and revels in your dismay. These blades, now coiled in sinister embrace, have inspired terror in the hearts of creatures far more durable than you, old man. Bound together as they are, I can only imagine what they could do to your soul's fragile shell. Raziel, I beg you to stay your hand. This was none of my doing. I have sought only to aid you in your righteous quest. Why, you're trembling, Mobius. Has your confidence abandoned you? You seem to have made a fatal error by leaving your precious staff behind. Is that where all your courage comes from? Listen to me, Raziel. You don't know what you're doing. I have taken an enormous risk by appearing here before you, so defenseless. Yet eager to prove my good intentions. If there's anything left of the Seraphim in you, you won't do this. While you threaten me, your true enemy eludes you. Don't concern yourself with Cain, old man. 
He'll join you in hell soon enough. As you said, death comes for us all. Yes, the wheel of fate demands it. What did you say? The wheel of fate. The inexorable cycle of death and rebirth to which all men are compelled. We serve the same God, Raziel. To strike me down would be striking God's own attendant. And I don't believe even you would take that risk. I tire of your games, Mobius. Now that I know you fear me, I needn't concern myself with you. Cain is waiting for me. Go then, Raziel. Seek Cain out and destroy him in the name of the one God we both serve. You, who were once a seraphim priest, murdered, profaned, destroyed, and reborn again from his mercy. You are now most powerfully equipped to be his agent, his instrument of restoration and retribution. My own vengeance is motivation enough. By my soul, you almost had me, my little blue assassin. But that'll be the one and only chance you get. I assure you of that. I could now summon the blade at will, regardless of my strength. But once summoned, the blade's ravenous appetite could not be contained. It devoured the souls of its victims. And if I allowed it to become over-aroused, the Reaver would now turn its hunger on me. So this was the legendary Janos Ordrin, reputed to have been the most ancient and diabolical vampire to have ever existed. According to folklore, he lived high in the cliffs of Nosgoth's northern mountains and preyed mercilessly on the defenseless villages below. His reign of terror ended when the Saravan finally hunted him down and tore his throbbing heart from his still living body. This relic came to be known as the Heart of Darkness, and was supposedly imbued with the power to restore vampiric unlife. The Seraphim therefore guarded it carefully, lest the heart fall into the hands of their enemies. But I wondered, could Janos Ordrin truly have been as monstrous as depicted here? Or was this merely artistic license by the Seraphim, who sought to lionize themselves by demonizing their darkest enemy? Strange how my history came full circle. This chapel, I realized, was a memorial to my former Saraphan brethren and myself. All of us martyred here. And then so cruelly profaned by Cain when he imposed his gift on our noble corpses. For the first time, I beheld the image of my Seraphan self, memorialized here among my fallen comrades. It tortured me to see how noble and pure I had been, and what a vile phantasm I had become and a profound sense of injury, of loss and betrayal, welled up in me, so overwhelming I could barely contain it. All I wanted at this moment was to find Cain and destroy him. first time beheld Nosgoth in its former glory. The land overflowed with abundant life and vitality. And I knew with certainty then that the world I had left behind was nothing more than the corpse of Nosgoth, a lifeless husk bled dry by the corruption of Cain's parasitic empire. This was the fragile world Cain sacrificed to preserve his own petty life and ambition, heedless of the profound cost. The sight only deepened my resolve. I sensed that the pillars lay to the northwest. And if Cain truly waited to confront me there, I would not disappoint him. As I passed this arcane landmark, 
A wisp of the Reaver's energy was drawn into the ring, illuminating it. This created a beacon of sorts in the spirit world. If ever I found myself depleted in the spectral realm, and my soul tossed on the ethereal winds, these beacons would draw me back to safety and restore me. These ancient obelisks were mysteriously attuned to my spiritual essence. By simply touching the symbol, I could safely preserve an imprint of my soul, and thus create a milestone to which I could return when weary, and from which I could resume my journey. While I had only just escaped the stronghold, I sensed that in time my journey would return me full circle to this place. Infiltrating the fortress, however, would be no small feat. The balcony that had provided my escape was now well beyond my reach, leaving this massive gateway as the only means of entry. The gates were sealed, but like the time-streaming chamber I had seen earlier, their operation was undoubtedly linked to that odd crystal mounted above the entrance. These vampires had nothing in common with the deranged jackals I left behind in Cain's derelict empire. They seem to retain much of their former humanity. In this era, vampires were clearly not the uncontested predators we had been. These creatures were hunted mercilessly and oppressed. And while I still believed that vampirism was a plague and had to be wiped out, there was nothing noble or righteous in this crusade. This was simply ruthless persecution. The Pillars of Nosgoth, pristine, whole, and uncorrupted. I had never beheld them in this undefiled state, yet something profound and indelible resonated within me at the sight. And there, waiting at the very heart of the Pillars, was the canker that was destined to destroy them. I know you're there, Raziel. Mobius led me to you, Cain. Though I might have guessed you'd meet me here. <laughs> and if Mobius told you I was hidden on the underside of Hell, would you throw yourself into oblivion to pursue me? Mobius trawls for the ignorant and unwary, hauling his gasping prey from the streams of their destinies. Stay out of his net, Raziel. Spare me your elaborate metaphors, Cain. I have pursued you here for one purpose. You will pay for your betrayal, and balance will thus be restored to Nosgoth. And whose will is satisfied then? The will of Raziel or Mobius? Would I be better manipulated by you, Cain? Now, turn and face me. The chase is over. This isn't a chase, Raziel. We are merely passengers on the wheel of destiny, describing a perfect circle to this point. We've been brought here for a reason. I've seen the beginning and the end of our story, however, and the tale is crude and ill-conceived. We must rewrite the ending of it. You and I. Face me, Cain. Even you shouldn't die a coward's death. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned a final request? I recall no such courtesy from you. Indulge me, Raziel. All I ask is that you listen. This is the sublime moment of our undoing, Raziel. The ineffable fulcrum upon which swings the entirety of our history. This is where all of Nosgoth is betrayed. In this instant, area. The Balance Guardian is murdered by dark forces bent on overthrowing the Pillars. Her spirit is just now tearing free, lost in the ether, trying to find its way here. You have already seen how she comes to haunt these Pillars. Bound here by your refusal to die, you are the reason this land becomes diseased. As long as you remain alive, you condemn Nosgoth to an eternity of decay. 
Be still, Raziel. See this. As Ariel dies, I am being born to take her place as Balance Guardian. Such is my destiny. At the moment of my first cry, Ariel's beloved, the Guardian Nutraptor, finds her corpse. Racked with grief and tormented by suspicions of treachery, Nutraptor plunges into a madness which overflows and infects all of the Guardians who are symbiotically bound, including me. The repercussions of Ariel's assassination were expertly calculated. The entire circle descends into madness, and I am tainted at the moment of my birth, instantly rendered incapable of fulfilling the role destiny has prepared for me. Shall I show you the same mercy you showed the rest of the circle, then? You blithely murdered them to restore their pillars, yet your hand faltered when it came to the final sacrifice. What makes you exempt, Cain? You're merely the last man standing. Why condemn me for simply carrying out what you hadn't the courage to do yourself? Let's drop the moral posturing, shall we? We both know there's no altruism in this pursuit. Your reckless indignation led you here. I counted on it. There's no shame in it, Raziel. Revenge is motivation enough. At least it's honest. Hate me, but do it honestly. Thirty years hence, I am presented with a dilemma. Let's call it a two-sided coin. If the coin falls one way, I sacrifice myself and thus restore the pillars. But as the last surviving vampire in Norsgoth, this would mean the annihilation of our species. Mobius made sure of that. If the coin lands on the reverse, I refuse the sacrifice and thus doom the pillars to an eternity of collapse. Either way, the game is rigged. We agree, then, that the pillars are crucial and must be restored. Yes, Raziel. And that's why we've come full circle to this place. So after all this, you make my case for me. To end this stalemate, you must die so that new guardians can be born. Pillars don't belong to them, Raziel. They belong to us. Your arrogance is Boundless, Cain. <laughs> There's a third option. A monumental secret hidden in your very presence here. But it's a secret you have to discover for yourself. Unearth your destiny, Raziel. It's all laid out for you here. You said it yourself, Cain. There are only two sides to your coin. Apparently so. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day, it lands on its edge. I didn't know what impulse stayed my hand, why I had so willingly allowed Cain to escape me when I had pursued him for so long. I had no reason to trust Cain after he had valued me so little. And yet, I found myself intrigued by his words. I had been too cruelly used to so gullibly play his pawn. But if this world truly had secrets to divulge, I was determined to expose them. From the moment of my arrival, I had the constant and palpable sensation of being watched. Someone, it seemed, was keenly interested in my presence here. From the look of it, this door had been sealed for centuries. I began to realize it was no mere coincidence that I found myself standing here, beneath this winged figure with blue skin and cloven hands so like my own, and bearing this unique key. And so it was with a sense of gravity and trepidation that I unsealed that ancient door and crossed the threshold. As I entered the chamber, I sensed that it had been sealed for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. 
And while this room was clearly built when the pillars were erected, I knew that no human hand could have shaped this place, and that perhaps it had never been seen by human eyes. The surrounding murals depicted a winged race, their features so like my own, but beautiful, where mine were grotesque, and angelic, while mine were demonic. I tried to decipher these images. A great war, but with combatants like none I had ever seen. The pillars, raised by this winged race, who thus defeated their adversaries. The winged beings again, writhing in agony, apparently afflicted with the same bloodthirst I had so recently suffered. And throughout the chamber, inscribed everywhere, images of the Reaver itself. Was this what Cain had urged me to discover? I wondered. Lies, Raziel. Do not be deceived. Ah, my ancient benefactor. And I dared to hope we had parted ways forever. The silence was refreshing, but it lasted. No doubt you have a conveniently inexpressible reason for your presence here. Do not be insolent, Raziel. I am eternally present here and everywhere, now and always. I am the still center of the turning wheel, the hub of this world's destiny. But perhaps not so omnipotent as you'd have me believe. Your hold on me appears to be tenuous. I no longer seem to need you. Yet I'm guessing you still need me. This impudence is unworthy of you, Raziel. Do not forget that you have a task to fulfill here. You are indebted to me. Indebted? You would have me show gratitude for a gift I didn't ask to be bestowed. Do you forget that you forced me to inhabit this vile carcass? I restored you to yourself, Raziel. It was Cain who destroyed you. The very enemy you've just let slip through your grasp. Do not fail me, my servant. I serve no one. Not you, not Cain, and not your lucky Mobius. Mobius is my good servant. I have many. And if I tell Mobius that he's worshipping a giant squid, do you think his faith will falter? You have grown willful, Raziel. But beware. To embrace a serpent is to invite poison into your heart. Cain is a sinuous beast. He will seduce and deceive you. You pride yourself on your free will, yet you let that degenerate deter your resolve. I harbor no illusions about his integrity, nor anyone else's. In fact, I am beset by manipulation on all sides. I merely seek the truth. These are the fathomless truths, Raziel. The agony of birth and death and rebirth? This is the wheel of fate, the purifying cycle which sustains all life. Vampires are an abomination, a plague which leeches this land of its spiritual strength. They obstruct the flow of life and death. Their souls stagnate in their wretched corpses. But the wheel must turn. Death is inexorable and cannot be denied. Your destiny is irresistible, Raziel. You are my soul reaver, the scourge of the vampires, reaper of their apostate souls. Remain steadfast, end the vampires' parasitic curse, and restore Nazgoth. Cain's blood belongs on your hands. Cain indeed deserves to die for condemning me to this repugnant form, but if and when I kill him, it will be for me alone to decide. Cain destroyed you without a flicker of remorse. He tore the soul from your noble corpse, and after you had served him faithfully for a thousand years, he discarded you in the abyss on a jealous whim. 
Remember your rage, Raciel. Let it guide your hand. I surfaced into a very different landscape. The daylight barely penetrated the dense canopy of this forest. Here I discovered an ancient ruin, unmistakably one of Mobius's time-streaming chambers, but long ago sealed and abandoned to the encroaching swamp. I didn't currently possess the means to break this seal, but I thought in time that I might. So, my lurking observer was exposed. The creature vanished when he realized he was discovered. But I caught a glimpse of him, and his features were distinctive enough. This was the vampire Vorador, the monstrous assassin depicted in the stronghold. Strange that a creature brazen enough to assault the Circle single-handedly would avoid confronting me. Very well. If Vorador would not come to me, I would go to him. But first I needed to find some means of reaching that terrace. There appeared to be a passage here, leading northward into the mountains. The opening, however, was obstructed and too high for me to reach. Perhaps later I would find the means to bypass these obstacles. My lurking friend was nowhere to be seen, but I found these ruins even more intriguing. I recognized these arcane symbols from the chamber beneath the pillars, and realized that this shrine too was sealed to all but the bearer of the reaver. Throughout this ancient shrine, murals depicted the winged race and the apocalyptic war against their mysterious and equally inhuman adversaries. These winged beings, it seemed, were not only the architects of the pillars, but of this enigmatic place as well. And just as in the pillars' chamber, this shrine was adorned throughout with imagery of the reaver depicted with the reverence of a holy icon. As I neared the altar, I suddenly felt the reaver quickening of its own volition. Just as in William's chapel, the balance of power tangibly shifted. Voracious and willful, the soul reaver was now in control, and I merely its helpless puppet. The reaver plunged itself into that mysterious altar, and devouring the energy that emanated from within, drained this place of its power. Thus sated, the Reaver released me, and I realized as I recovered control that these ancient shrines were forges, each purpose built to enhance the Reaver with elemental power.
Now I understood the purpose of the mysterious basins I had seen throughout my journey. They were elemental fonts, each attuned to a fundamental essence. When I forged the blade, every font in Nosgoth with the same elemental attunement was simultaneously quickened. The Reaver's enhancements were never permanent, but these fonts enabled me to re-imbue the blade by bathing it in the elemental energy distilled therein. Concentric circles, one eclipsing the other. I recognized this symbol from the door sealing that other ancient shrine, the one I had seen in the lake outside the Seraphan stronghold. Perhaps now, armed as I was with the elemental power of darkness, I could return and gain entry. You're a ragged excuse for a savior. Vorador. I see my reputation precedes me. It does. All good, I hope. I've been watching you since you emerged from that accursed stronghold. Strange that your arrival coincides with the corruption of the pillars. But I'm wondering, are you the catalyst of these events? Or the answer to them? I don't know what you mean. I will speak plainly then. I distrust your origin, stranger. Seeing you crawl from the putrid depths of Mobius's keep makes me question your purpose here. And what should I make of your appearance? Not human, clearly, and more demon than vampire. And the pillars. It is no mere coincidence that your arrival in that clearing heralded the pillar's decay. And so I ask you plainly, are you the instrument of the pillar's destruction? or their salvation. Neither. Very well. Let us look at the other side of the coin. I have followed your journey and watched as you've blithely unlocked secrets that have been sealed and forbidden for thousands of years. The path you have been treading is open to only one being. You don't know what you are, do you? I have been many things. If you find me ignorant, enlighten me. <laughs> What's the point? This world is beyond redemption. Let the human cattle have it. I would expect better than meek capitulation from you. Centuries of persecution have taught me well. Five hundred years ago, our race was nearly exterminated by the fanatical crusades of the Seraphan. And now the same sick drama unfolds again. In merely a decade, Mobius's cutthroat citizen army has nearly accomplished what the Seraphan could not. Vampires meddling in the affairs of men. Look where it's brought us. What am I to make of these secrets I've uncovered, then? The depictions of the winged race, the pillars, and the reaver. Fairy tales, boy. The delusions of an ancient culture clinging to hope long after the world had discarded them. Their bloodline trickled away, until only one of the ancients remained, sustained solely by obligation and his unfaltering faith in the old prophecies. But you see, even if you are who you appear to be, it no longer matters. You're simply too late. Janos Audrin, the Reaver Guardian, the last of the Ancients, and my Maker, was murdered by the Seraphan nearly five centuries ago. He alone would have the answers you seek, but his secrets died with him. I don't know how you've come even this far without his guidance, or without the Reaver, stolen these five hundred years ago by the Seraphan. I'm afraid, my friend, that you 
and all of us are out of luck. I had no less reason to trust Vorador than anyone else I had met. In fact, the ancient vampire was the most forthright being I had encountered thus far. If Janos Ordren was the key to all this, then I would find him, and Mobius's time-streaming device would provide me passage. But first, I had to find a way back into the stronghold, and I suspected I would find the means within the lake's mysterious shrine. Ah, my wayward child returns. Having unearthed more than you'd like, I suspect. What am I to make of these ruins that litter the land, and these images here in this chamber? Merely the deceits of a failed civilization. You are being misled, Raziel. This ancient race hoped to manipulate the future with these scrawled misdirections. You must tread carefully. There are dark forces at work in this world, bent on subverting your true destiny. I have no doubt of that. The question is, am I in their presence right now? Your arrogance will spell your demise, Raziel. Deny my will, and the arc of your destiny will reach a sudden conclusion. Your threats are unmoving. Even now, I'm beyond your reach. My reach is longer than you realize. This is a very dangerous game you're playing, Raziel. These murals left no room for doubt. These winged creatures were indeed the architects of the pillars. And while the images were difficult to decipher, the pillars appeared to banish or diminish their enemies somehow. plunged the reaver into the forge and imbued the blade with the elemental power of light. Thus armed, I now had the means to re-enter the stronghold and finally use Mobius's time-streaming device to accomplish my own ends. Show yourself, Cain. Here, Raziel. Everything is decided here. You cannot comprehend the magnitude, the rapture, and the tragedy of this moment. And yet you must, if Nosgoth is to be dragged from the wreckage of its damnation. I understand only this, Cain. That you and Mobius have impelled me to this moment simply means I can trust neither of you. I don't know who's pulling the strings, but it no longer matters, because I'm cutting them. I set my own course from here. If it were only that, Senor. Your fatalism is tiresome, King. And profoundly ingrained, Raziel. You must understand, 
Our presence here doesn't alter history. You and I meet here because we are compelled to. We have always met here. History is irredeemable. Drop a stone into a rushing river. The current simply courses around it and flows on as if the obstruction were never there. You and I are pebbles, Raziel, and have even less hope of disrupting the time stream. The continuum of history is simply too strong, too resilient. Except, then how do we explain William here? The beloved boy king turned tyrant. In my youth, I witnessed William's rise to power and his transformation into the nemesis who laid waste to Nosgoth. Keep your distance, Kane. Years later, I stumble upon a chance to journey back in history, unaware that the entire affair has been carefully orchestrated by Mobius. In my wisdom, I seize this opportunity to murder the young king before he can ravage Nosgoth, and thereby provide the catalyst Mobius needs to ignite a genocidal war against our race. I warn you, no further. This one reckless act unravels the skein of history. The nemesis never becomes the nemesis. William dies a martyred saint. I, the vampire assassin, become the author of my own species' extinction, and Mobius profits from it all. I destroyed a tyrant only to create one far worse. But how can it be so? How, if history is immutable? The answer is here in this room, Raziel. Mobius propelled William and me together, but ensured first that we were both armed with the Soul Reaver. The Reaver is the key. Two incarnations of the Blade meet in time and space. A paradox is created, a temporal distortion powerful enough to derail history. Is this your sorcery? Not mine, Raziel. Yours. You have nothing to fear from me, Raziel. You hold all of the cards. Then perhaps I should test your sincerity. If what you say is true, you should be terrified. I could kill you here and now. And so you do, Razia. We're hurtling towards our destinies, Raziel. What you feel is the pull of history rushing to meet us. This is where history and destiny collide. If you truly believe in free will, Raziel, now is the time to prove it. Kill me now, and we both become pawns of history, dragged down the path of an artificial destiny. I was ordained to assume the role of Balanced Guardian in Nosgoth, while you were destined to be its savior. But the map of my fate was redrawn by Mobius, and so in turn was yours. This is madness! Fight it, Raziel. This moment does not have to be an ending. It can become a prelude. I can't! You can, Raziel! Look inside, and see that it is so. You have the power to reshape our inevitable futures. your monumental decision. This is where we restore ourselves, Raziel, and reclaim our intended destinies. It may yet be possible for me to assume my role as Balanced Guardian and return the Pillars to their rightful inheritors. 
to the vampires. And this is the destiny you have urged me to discover. I don't know what game you and Mobius are playing, Kane, but I refuse to be your pawn. Unlike you, I still revere whatever shred of humanity I've managed to preserve. You will not use me as the instrument of your messianic delusions. Very well, Raziel. I'll not ask you to trust me. Your truths are for you to discover alone. Humble words for one who presumes to teach me a lesson at every turn. And continue your journey and learn your own lessons, Raziel. Remember, Mobius led you here, but you walk away unfettered. A champion of free will and conqueror of false histories. There is much more for you to unearth, if you have the heart for the truth and the will to see it. I like that look on your face, Mobius. You really don't know what to do now, do you, old man? Here you are, caught without your damn staff. And I suspect things aren't progressing quite as you'd hoped. You're not used to the fly turning to confront you in your web, are you? Cain's devious influence has poisoned your mind, Razio. Now you see betrayal everywhere, even in your closest allies. We were never allies, Mobius. Conspirators, perhaps. Briefly. Why did you not kill Cain when you had the chance? He was at your mercy. Precisely. I had a choice. And I chose mercy. And now I know your sordid little secret. The significance of that displacement I felt when the two Reavers came together. Strangely enough, I was enlightened by the devious Cain, not by you. In fact, I've learned much more than you counted on. I understand now how you've tried to manipulate all of history for your own personal gain. But now all your little schemes are whirling in ruin around you, aren't they? All because I chose to exert my will for once, rather than obey the demands of sorcerers and spirits and demons all singing the same tiresome refrain, Kill Cain! I'm setting my own path from here, Mobius. I intend to discover the truth behind all of this. But you condemn us all with this impetuous act. Hardly impetuous. It took all the will I could muster. Has my refusal to kill Cain reshuffled your carefully stacked deck of cards? You really think that you're exercising your free will, Raziel? You're simply Cain's servant. I do not serve Cain. I merely did not kill him. Raziel, do not forget your purpose here. You are destined to be the savior of Nosgoth. Oh, I'm sick of hearing that particular phrase. As for saving Nosgoth, so far I see precious little reason to bother. And I'll choose my own purpose from here on out, time streamer. Right now, I choose to manipulate you for a change. Go. In there. What are you doing? Come, Mobius. You're a cunning serpent. You'll piece it together, I imagine. This error is of no further use to me. You will operate this device to provide me passage. I want to see the world in a simpler time, before the Saraphan began their crusade. And what about Cain? You're leaving your quarry behind. You kill him if it's so damned important. You need only touch the two poles of the switch, and the device will transport you. But I urge you to reconsider. You've lost your powers of persuasion, old man. Rot here, and forget me.
Even as I emerged from that infernal time-streaming chamber, I suspected treachery. The stronghold was vacant, derelict, and abandoned. If I had any doubts about the error I now occupied, this grotesque tableau certainly eliminated them. For here was Mobius, long since murdered by Cain, lionized and beatified as the martyred leader of his bloodthirsty crusade. And if I required further evidence, I needed only to behold the gruesome trophy Mobius held aloft. A severed head of Vorador. The final triumphant kill of Mobius's cutthroat mob. His execution marked the annihilation of the vampires. Far from channeling me into Nosgoth's past, Mobius had propelled me over a century to its ghastly future. The intent behind this little detour was unmistakable. Having failed to make me his obedient assassin, Mobius intended to keep me ignorant of my true destiny, which clearly lay in Nosgoth's past. While his deception only reinforced my purpose, Mobius had effectively stranded me here. This left me no course but to explore the era I now occupied and see what changes the century had wrought following Cain's ill-fated decision. Perhaps time had cleared a path for me into the mountains, where I might unearth more clues behind the mystery of Janos Audren. Not yet. What pathetic charade is this now, Mobius? No charade, Razia. Only the entreaties of this martyred spirit. Your pleas mean nothing to me after all your deceit. You have propelled me into Nosgoth's future, Mobius, and left me stranded here. I am truly sorry, Razia, but it was necessary. Consider it the last valiant act of a doomed man. You have strayed from your purpose. And now behold the result. Gaze upon the wasteland you and Cain offered together. I fail to see how I'm responsible. You spared Cain, and by doing so, you have released a multitude of horrors upon this world. I can accept that Cain has murdered me, has he? As the Time Guardian, I foresaw that incident long before it occurred. And I take some small comfort in the fact that Cain remains the sole survivor of his vile breed. But you have single-handedly made my sacrifice meaningless. Your argument is disingenuous, Time Streamer. I cannot see how killing or sparing Cain's future self would alter these events. This wasteland was created by Cain's original refusal at the Pillars. Amidst all these twists and turns, that event has never changed. You are coming, Mobius. I think you've gotten time for more. As Cain clings to his precious seat of power, the pillars sink into a mire of decay, dragging all of Nosgoth down with them. I don't think this has anything to do with the Pillars, or Cain's failure to sacrifice himself. I think you're simply afraid, because you don't know what he's up to. He's a wild card, isn't he? And you don't want his influence in your game. Which is why you wanted me to eliminate him. Well, now that he's survived, you have no idea what's coming, do you? Maybe, for the first time in your entire life, you're terrified that he may have truly found a third option out of the dilemma you orchestrated for him. Cain's lies have added your mind. Leave this place and trouble my spirit no more. If you even are a spirit, you've forgotten. 
I have a way to tell for sure. If you're willing to risk it. I didn't think so. Either way, you lose. These were the pillars so familiar to my blighted eyes. But now that I had begun to learn their true significance, I regarded the pillars' destruction with a new, enlightened sense of horror. And I questioned now whether Cain's simple refusal, his mere ambition, could truly have caused such devastation. I felt that some darker influence was at work here. As I approached, I discerned the spirit of Ariel, bound here now for more than a century. Forever am I bound, hope abandoned, my spirit tethered to this place. What destroyed the circle could not touch me, for I was newly dead and beyond harm's reach. I alone was spared the descent into madness, and Cain alone was spared the pain of death. When Nepraptor's poison seized Cain even in the safety of the womb, much more than just his destiny was lost. All of Nosgoth lost balance. Consider us now, both of us less than we once were. I, pure but insubstantial, and Cain terribly real, but corrupted. Your imprisonment here has deranged you, spirit. You fixate on Cain because you believe he is the tether that binds you here. But we both know he is not the author of your agony. The pillars were subverted by dark forces, invited by the guardians themselves. The more I learn of your circle, the more I see a tangle of nested manipulations. Cain handed them their victory. They sought to topple the pillars, and he was their willing instrument. Or was he their unwilling pawn? Would it blunt your wrath to know that Cain's dilemma was calculated to bring the pillars down, regardless of the choice he made, and that the devastation would have been even greater had he chosen the path you would prescribe for him? Oh, you are a subtle, deceitful creature. But your clever arguments do not absolve Cain. He must die for the pillars to be restored. There is no other way. Then consider this more ominous possibility. What if Cain's death does not restore the pillars? Consider that it may simply be too late, that this world may be beyond redemption, and that you may be bound here eternally. Do you hound me, demon? You can see that I am captive here. Show me some mercy. Like the mercy you showed your fellow guardians when you set Cain on them? Or the mercy you showed Cain when you kept him ignorant of his destiny while you used him as the scourge of the circle? Or perhaps like the mercy you showed your beloved Nepraptor when you made him Cain's first kill? You are cruel. Why do you torment me? I'm merely looking for answers, Ariel. Ah, very well. I'll leave you in peace. But know this about you and this purgatory from which you long to escape. You're merely at the threshold.
Raziel, the failed assassin. You had Cain at your mercy, but lacked the courage to fulfill the act. And now you see the wasteland wrought by the tyrant's hand, by his selfish decision to preserve his own life, even when it meant sacrificing the whole world. This is the fate of Nosgoth, as long as Cain remains alive. An ironic condemnation, given this guilty sin. One would think you'd torn down the pillars single-handedly. What are you trying to obliterate as you drag your loathsome body through this chamber? And why, as Nosgoth descends into madness and misery, do you appear to thrive? Things in this world, I am learning, are rarely what they seem. You, apparently, are no exception. I am the engine of life, the source of Nosgoth's very existence. I am the hub of the wheel, the origin of all life, the devourer of death. Or maybe you're just hungry. Could it be as simple as that? Wouldn't that be poetic irony? The great adversary of the vampires turns out to be the biggest parasite of them all. Do not test my patience, Raziel. I made you, and I will unmake you if I become so inclined. As your agent, I am beyond death. There are fates worse than death, Raziel. Oh, I see you now as you truly are. A cancer, a spooling parasite burrowed deep in the heart of this world. Go now. Play out your pitiful rebellion and take your place among the destroyed, the used, and the damned. But know this. You are mine for eternity. You have always been, and will always be, my soul reaver. Beyond this edifice lay my sole hope of escaping this demon-infested wasteland. The time-streaming device contained therein offered my only prospect of journeying back into Nosgoth's early history. Unless I discovered some means of breaking the seal, condemned to be stranded here eternally. The passage of time had indeed cleared my way forward, enabling me to explore the northern mountains of Nosgoth. I was anxious to discover if some evidence of Janos Audrin's existence might still remain. Here I discovered the quaint hamlet of Ushtenheim, now long abandoned and collapsing into ruin. Legend claimed that Janos Audrin terrorized its villagers until the Saraphan hunters ferreted him out and destroyed him. If there was any truth to the old tales, the lair of the infamous vampire would not be far away. This edifice was clearly not crafted by human architects. As the figure beneath the balcony silently attested, these were the Ares of winged beings. Undoubtedly, I stood before the mountain refuge of the legendary Janos Audrin, but the entire sanctuary lay in ruin, collapsed under the force of some ancient cataclysm. As I suspected, the time streamer's deception ensured I was centuries too late to unearth anything of consequence here. With nothing behind me but the wasteland I had traversed, I resolved to press on and explore these canyons further. Oh no. Every time you turn up, something monumental and terrible happens. I don't think I have the stomach for it. No drama this time, Brazier. You are persistent, crossing time like this to follow me. Still waiting for that coin of yours to land on its edge. 
I'm biding my time. I see that Mobius has played a little trick on you. Yes. He clearly doesn't want me to meet this Janos Audrin. Perhaps. Or maybe he merely hoped that it would harden your heart against me to see this wasteland which I single-handedly authored. My heart doesn't need hardening, Cain. If I even suspected that destroying you would make any difference, I would do it this instant. <laughs> I knew you'd see through them, Raziel. Janos is indeed the key to your destiny, but you'll need to find your own way back into Nosgoth's path. Make no mistake, though, Raziel. You and I are now in great danger. We are irritants here. Malevolent forces are being marshaled to eliminate us. You talk as though we're allies. Regardless of your sentiments, Raziel, in their eyes, we are. Well, they're certainly trying to eliminate you, King. There can be no doubt of that. I am assaulted relentlessly with demands for your demise. Whatever it is that you're plotting, you're scared to death of me. As for me, I suspect they made a grave error when they allowed my unique resurrection. I don't think they know how to destroy me. You mustn't underestimate them, Raziel. And who exactly is this diabolical they to which we keep referring? If there's some grand conspiracy going on, the right hand doesn't appear to know what the left is doing. Even Mobius seems to be caught out at every turn. Mobius is a puppet, Raziel. Haven't you realized that yet? That's the sweetest irony in all of this. Nosgoth, great manipulator, is their plaything. But the ones pulling the strings haven't shown their faces. Yeah. They don't like us unwriting their carefully choreographed history, though, do they? You must understand, Razio, we haven't unwritten history, we've merely rewritten it. The future flows around our petty actions, finding the path of least resistance while admitting only the slightest alterations. This is the reshuffling you felt when you refused to kill me. And remember, Razio. We are irritants in this regard as well. History will not allow the introduction of a paradox. And if events cannot be reshuffled to accommodate the change? It is the irritant who's expelled. Bear in mind, this may be exactly the outcome our enemies are trying to provoke. We must tread very carefully. The scenes I discovered here were unambiguous. This race of winged beings, the architects of the pillars and the creators of the Reaver, were Nosgoth's first vampires. Their bloodthirst appeared to be a curse inflicted upon them by their vanquished enemies. These images confirmed the truths that Cain had divulged to me, but I had been too incredulous to accept. I struggled in vain to see how the pieces fit together. How Cain intended to escape the dilemma of his destiny, and what role he had plotted for me, and why Mobius and the dark powers with which he seemed to be allied were so desperate to see Cain dead, and so intent on me being the instrument of his execution.
As the reaver drained the forge of its vital energy, the tempest receded. I recovered myself and paused to admire my newly forged weapon, now imbued with the elemental power of air. Thus armed, I hope that I now finally possess the means to escape this wasted land. This elemental reaver I discovered had the power to obliterate barriers that were cracked or compromised. At last, I had the means to open that ruined time-streaming chamber I discovered so long ago in the swamp. Now, perhaps, I could leave this wasteland and return to an era when Janos Ordrin still lived. I had no choice but to act purely on blind faith. There was no way to tell what error this device was tuned to, and I had neither the knowledge nor the means to set the machine myself. I hesitated only briefly. Then, throwing the switch, I hurled myself into oblivion and relinquished my will to the hand of fate. Beyond all hope and against all probability, it seemed that the device had unerringly delivered me to the era I sought. For these were Seraphan banners, and these vampires apparently the victims of their crusade. The coincidence seemed too convenient to naively ascribe to fate, but whether my opportune arrival had been orchestrated by Mobius or some other influence, I didn't know. If Janos Ordrin still lived, I would find him. But I was wary of further deception, and resolved to tread carefully. For all the butchery of Mobius's crusade, this massacre was somehow more chilling. The killing fields of the Seraphim betrayed a kind of orderly ruthlessness. The cold-blooded righteousness of the true believer. By all that is holy! Here at last, in the flesh, I beheld my former brothers in arms, the warrior priests of the Seraphan Order, their lives devoted solely to the annihilation of the Vampire Plague. And while I confess, I felt a twinge of longing, a pang of grief for what I had believed was my lost virtue. I regarded them now with none of the reverence I formerly felt. For I had seen the human face of the vampires, and now I beheld the monstrousness of these men. After my long journey, I finally stood on the threshold of enlightenment. For here was Janos Ordrin's mountain retreat, intact and unblemished. The upheaval that would one day topple this ancient edifice had not yet occurred. And while I had no certainty that Janos still lived, this scene boded well. For I presumed that the collapse of the retreat must have followed the ancient vampire's demise. There was only one obstacle. How to reach the balcony suspended at that maddening height, so far beyond my reach. For this was the architecture of winged creatures. The tattered ruins of my wings were of no use. I would need to devise some other means into that mountain. The mountain's interior was hollow, I discovered and graced with soaring architecture unique to its creators. As with the outer facade, these balconies and galleries could only be reached by those gifted with flight. With only my ruined wings to carry me, this towering labyrinth seemed impassable. But the object of my quest lay just beyond my grasp. For here, suspended at the apex of the chamber, was the threshold that surely led to the great vampire himself. I didn't know whether Janos Ordrin was the monster depicted in the stronghold or one of the noble creatures memorialized among the ruins of the ancient vampires. And I didn't care. Demon or angel, 
He alone held the key to my destiny. Janus Audrin? It is heartening after all these years to hear my name spoken without contempt. Razia? My child, what have they done to you? I have been dragged through hell and back. All it seems to reach this moment. But I don't yet know why. For thousands of years I have waited alone here. Losing faith. At the time of the binding, nine guardians were called to serve the pillars, and I was summoned as the tenth guardian, the keeper of the reaver, the weapon of our salvation. Over time, our race died out, until I alone remained, sustained only by my obligation to you and by my guardianship of the blade. And the other nine? Why did their guardianship not sustain them? I don't know. As our race dwindled, the humans prospered. I have watched over the centuries as our history faded into myth and finally receded altogether. The humans have forgotten us entirely and claimed the pillars for themselves, wholly ignorant of their true purpose. To them, I am merely a devil the origin of their vampire plague. Why would the Pillars summon human guardians then if they are meant to be served by vampires? The Pillars choose their guardians from birth, Raziel, and vampires are no longer born. This is the crux of our dilemma, and this is the terrible irony. With their vampire purge, the members of the Circle have assaulted the very architects of the pillars they are sworn to protect. They have embarked on a treacherous path. With every vampire they kill, the humans are slitting their own throats. They know I'm up here, beyond their reach, and it terrifies them. You can see how they flaunt their kills to torment me. Or perhaps simply to lure me out. They have this foolish notion that destroying me will somehow topple our entire bloodline. <laughs> Thankfully, we're not that fragile. I've seen them mustering their forces in the village below. Yes. I don't know what they're plotting, but I fear our time may be bitterly short. Mankind seems to have brought you only torment and grief. You must hate them. They fear what they don't understand. And they despise what they fear. But no, I do not hate them. Vorador does. Mm, he has suffered much. He cannot forgive them. Should they be forgiven? They don't understand what they're doing. They are simply unenlightened and vulnerable to manipulation. So, it's all true then, what Cain and Vorador have told me. I really am some kind of unholy vampire messiah. Unholy? 
No. Messiah, perhaps. I don't like that word. It smells of martyrdom. Raziel, your role in this world's destiny is more crucial and more benevolent than you've allowed yourself to believe. Your journey will not be easy. Dark powers are allied against you. But I think you already know this. You appear to have been cruelly tested. The binding must be secured, Raziel. The pillars are the lock. And the Reaver is the key. Yes. The Reaver is here. Why do I feel nothing? The most formidable weapon ever forged by our swordsmiths. They infused the blade with vampiric energy, empowering the Reaver to drain our enemies of their precious lifeblood. As Janos presented the blade, an inexplicable sense of dread crept over me, more palpable than anything I'd felt before. I was at once horribly repelled by the sword, and yet irresistibly compelled to touch it, to take it up. Please, take it away from me. I fear you have been followed. You must save yourself, Raziel. Janos! No! My surroundings whirled sickeningly, and I found myself transported safely away from the ambush to an adjacent chamber. Janos had delivered me from the Saraphan selflessly forfeiting his own safety to preserve my life. And now I feared that my newfound mentor would be slaughtered by the very crusaders I had so recently revered. The irony pierced me, and with dawning horror, I realized that I had been duped by Mobius from the beginning, for the Saraphan had simply followed the path I gullibly blazed through this sanctuary, and had arrived bearing Mobius's staff. Thus armed, they had Janos at their mercy. Through the door, I could hear them battling, less than a dozen paces away. It may as well have been a thousand miles, for this barrier was sealed by elemental forces I did not possess. It seemed Janos had conveyed me into the heart of the Fire Shrine. I thought perhaps if I could galvanize the forge and imbue the Reaver in time, I might have a slim chance of saving Janos from his grisly fate.
Plunge the reaver into that furnace and forge the blade with elemental fire. With the reaver thus imbued, I was now armed to unlock the elemental barrier and rescue Janos from his executioners. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I failed you. No, Razia. Perhaps this was my true purpose. Simply to save your life this once. While I have taken yours. Embrace your destiny, Razia. You must reclaim the river. It was forged for you, and you alone. Without it, there is no hope. <sighs> As I backed away from Janos's body, I was overwhelmed by a sense of self-loathing so deep I could barely contain it. In that instant, I rejected all that I ever was and embraced the role Janos had safeguarded for me so patiently throughout the centuries. I knew then what I had to do, the task for which I was uniquely prepared. I would pursue the Seraphim dogs to their loathsome fortress and avenge Janos Ordren's murder. Mobius would pay dearly for his treachery, and my Seraphim brethren would reap the horrors they had sown. I would retake the stolen reaver, which was rightfully mine. And finally, when all these debts had been paid, I would reclaim Janos Ordren's heart from their filthy, unworthy hands. If the heart was truly imbued with the power to restore vampiric unlife, its highest purpose was clear to me. I would restore the heart to Janos, and thus undo the vile crime committed by my abominable former self. So, these demonic pests were not merely the product of Nosgoth's corrupted future, for here they were, hurtling back over five centuries to pursue me. These creatures, I suspected, were minions of the unseen forces that had hoped to control me. This was the tangible expression of their displeasure. These demons were unleashed as the penalty for my disobedience.
have failed me, Raziel. I wonder, old one. Did you truly resurrect me, or were you simply there when I awakened from my torment in the Abyss? I suspect you found me merely convenient, dropped in your lair by Cain, indestructible for some reason, a durable and gullible tool for you to manipulate. This one thing I readily admit. I have been used by others time and again, but always I seem to stray from their path. What is it about me, demon, that makes me such an unreliable instrument? Why do I survive one trial after another, on and on, in an endless succession of humiliating deaths and resurrections? It seems there is much more to my destiny and my history than I know. Perhaps more than you know as well. I discovered the Reaver suspiciously laid across my path. Again, I sensed nothing of that temporal distortion, the peculiar sense of displacement I had felt when I encountered the Reaver in William's Chapel. Cornered here with the blade, I suffered the same nameless dread that I had experienced when Janos first presented the Reaver to me. I felt at once repelled by the blade, and yet overwhelmingly compelled to seize it. So, Raziel, here we are, finally. You have no choice but to confront me now, and I am not so foolish as I've let you believe. We have business to conclude. You knew I would lead the Seraphim to Janos, you vile bastard. You've been orchestrating my every move. <laughs> My destiny is an amusement to you. It was fun while it lasted. I think not, Raziel. Malik, do not let this creature leave. He poses a danger to the circle. Poor deluded Raziel, did you somehow imagine you had the guile to change history on me? I'm the time streamer. I knew your every intention before you did, you imbecile. Lord Mobius, there is trouble within. The circle is under Hold attack. Fast, Malik. This one is the real danger to us. What are you trying to concoct here, Mobius? You toxic creature. Did you imagine I'd simply allow you to run loose, corrupting everything you encounter? I admit that I've underestimated you to this point, Mobius. It's a mistake I won't repeat. Wrong again, Raziel. Now, Malik, bolt the door. Using his staff to disable my wraith blade. Mobius effectively disarmed me, leaving me with only one choice of weapon. And yet I confess, it was not the lack of options, but blind rage that made me take up the Reaver. In my fury, it felt as though my hand had acted of its own will. And now, that same hand clutched the hilt with unyielding strength, and I felt a constrained tingling, a remote but palpable sense of longing as the disabled Wraithblade tried vainly to embrace its physical twin. I recognize these two as my former brethren, in life as Seraphan, 
and in unlife as Cain's vampire sons. Melchiah and Zephon, the weakest of Cain's brood. These bastards had no idea what future lay in store for them. How they would become the very thing they so despised. The Reva hummed with ravenous anticipation. Janos had called it a vampiric blade, endowed with the power to drain its victims of their lifeblood. I was eager to see what the Reva would do to these two. As Melchiah and Zephon fell before my blade, I felt the Reaver's bloodthirst as keenly as I ever had when I was still a vampire. I could sense the boundary between us dissolving. The Reaver was consumed with my rage, and I was intoxicated by its bloodlust. The blade had a vitalizing effect on me. My physical energy no longer decayed over time, and the wounds inflicted by my foes healed almost instantly. The Reaver had made me invincible. Have you come to reclaim the monster's black heart? You'll have to get through us first. My former brethren, Duma and Rahab, confronted me next. This all seemed so elegantly choreographed. Exhilarated by the Reaver, I was drunk with revelations. I could finally appreciate the delicious irony of Cain's blasphemous private joke and I reveled as I colluded with him across the centuries. For it was I who put these bastards in their tomb, thus providing the corpses for Cain to raise as his vampire sons a millennium from now. Get back to the pit you crawled from, demon. And here at last was my brother Turel, who along with Duma would bear me into the abyss without questioning Cain's command. So dutiful and righteous, even as a vampire. I guess some habits die hard. The vampire Turel had eluded my vengeance. The Saraphan Turel would not. So, Vampire, here we are. You've destroyed my brethren, and now you've come for me. You'll find I'm not such easy prey. I don't want to kill you, but I will if I must. Return the heart to me, and we can end this now. So, you've come to avenge that filthy parasite and reclaim his foul heart. You're a righteous fiend, aren't you? Apparently, I am. No, Vampire. This is where it ends. But you won't be leaving this room. Now, let's finish this. I'll make it mercifully quick. As you did for Janos? <laughs> no, that beast had eluded us for far too long. It would have been a shame to end him too quickly. It's ironic, really. The great Janos Ordrin turned out to be no challenge at all. Thanks to you. Did you hear his cowardly screams when I tore that black heart out of his carcass? I renounce you. And so it ends. My history comes full circle. Sensing its twin, the wraith blade uncoiled itself from me, and instead wound lovingly around its former self. I felt its grip loosen, and as the blade left me, its absence chilled me more than its presence ever had. 
A foreboding sense of emptiness and loss stole over me, and a terrible revelation gathered like a storm at the edge of my awareness. With all other foes exhausted, the conjoined blades turned themselves on me, and I realized, finally, why I had sensed nothing when Janos offered me the blade. The Reaver was never forged to be a soul-stealing weapon. The ravenous, soul-devouring entity trapped in the blade was, and always had been, me. This is why the blade was destroyed when Cain tried to strike me down. The Reaver could not devour its own soul. The paradox shattered the blade. So, this was my terrible destiny. To play out this purgatorial cycle for all eternity. I could not bear it. Despair overwhelmed me. You! weakening, unable to hold on any longer. The Reaver was too strong, the compulsion to simply let go, too great. And then, a growing sense of vertigo and the familiar displacement, the paradoxical moment when my twin soul hovered both outside and inside the Reaver blade. This was the instant. The glimmer of temporal distortion Cain had been counting on all along. This was the edge of the coin, the minute flicker of probability upon which Cain had gambled everything. <laughs> Now you are free to reclaim your true destiny, Raziel. Behind Cain's eyes, I could see new memories blooming and dying as history labored to reshuffle itself around this monumental obstruction. And I could see by the dawning horror on his face that perhaps we had strained history too far this time. That by trying to alter my fate, he may have introduced a fatal paradox. My god. The Hilden. We walked right into their trap. Raziel. Janos must stay dead. But Cain's warning was lost as I slipped into the spirit realm, too weak to maintain my physical form. And there... Waiting for me, as always, was the Reaver, the Wraithblade, my own soul, twinned and bound eternally to me. And I realized that I could never escape my terrible destiny. I had merely postponed it. History abhors a paradox.